tomorrow may not bring that same thing that you said last night. Woo! Every time I find a little piece of mind, I hold on tight. Cause tomorrow may not bring the very same thing. No, no, no. How you doing, Miss Bonnie? Hey, Mr. Parson, Brother Bill, Evangelist Manuscript, Pastor Bill. How are you? Hey, I'm fantastic, and thank yeah. you for asking. Well, Miss Bonnie, we're going to start off here kind of slow, like we want to go back a little bit, just to step back a little bit. I know the relationship with your father and things, and can you explain how, how this whole process of drugs and how the prostitution and things like that, how you were really introduced to that? I certainly can. When I was a young teenager, my dad owned a hotel in Kansas City, Missouri, where I grew up. It was on 18th and Vine. It was called the Streets Hotel. And at that time, can you imagine living in a suite and then coming up, going to school every morning by prostitutes, thieves, hustlers, this was every morning. We just thought it was a part of life. And I must say, I, I enjoyed it because we were dressed to kill. We had any and everything we wanted. My dad was a pimp at that time, and hey, he did very well. But coming from a family of five girls, we learned hard. Well, well tell me this. I, I don't mean to cut you off, but I just wanted to know a little bit. He said your father was a pimp. My father was a pimp. Okay. Before he okay. was a preacher. And you are, was that, what was the name of the hotel? Street it Hotel. It was called the Street Hotel. Very well known establishment. Okay. Right off of 18th and 9th in Kansas City, Missouri. Okay, my sister. Okay, so here you are with the pimps, the prostitutes living in the yes. hotel. Okay, take yes. it from there. And like I said, every morning it was a different great adventure because these ladies of the night, these prostitutes dressed to kill, they had the minks, the diamonds, anything that a young girl thought that she might have wanted, that's what they came up with. We were going to school every day, passing the pimps, the thieves, the prostitutes, and the hustlers. So anything my dad wanted, he got. So as a young girl, I was hiding underneath the counter to see what was going on, and I heard every transaction, every transaction. Yes, I did. <laughs> what? Well, what? Well, what? Well, tell me, every transaction. Okay. Every transaction. So I would say not only with the prostitution, probably with some drugs, right. and things like that. And yeah. your father was involved. Well, can you explain a little bit? Did your mother know about this, or how, how was your mother in this situation? My mother was the madam. She Look out. That means she took care of, made sure them women paid when they were supposed to pay, made sure they ate well, made sure they slept well, made sure they put their makeup on properly, and better yet, she had dinner for everyone when we came home as, as well. So she was a great mom. We fell in love with one of the prostitutes. She, we adopted her as one of our uh, sisters. Wait a minute, wait a minute, wait a minute. Yes. You adopting prostitutes now? Come on adopted now. adopted a prostitute for her sister. But can I tell you, she was amazing. 
When I say amazing, she was amazing. She would uh, take it from my mom if my mom and dad got into an altercation. Oh, my mom and that lady would jump on dad like, whoop, south going north. <laughs> It was good. I mean, he never knew. So your dad gets beat up by the man of man, one of the and one of the women. One of the prostitutes. And you sitting there picking up on all of this. All of that, Bill. Okay, so so as you journey down the road here a little bit, yes. did your did your father did your father ever come out of that life? Did he ever leave that life? Bill, he did. And when he left that life. And he turned his life around. He told everyone he knew, I was in the streets 100. I'm going to God 100. Amen. 110. And better yet, he saved a lot of the prostitutes, the pimps, and the thieves. They went to heaven as well. He, they turned their life around based upon what they saw, the transition. Because they saw him in the streets. Amen. So they knew it was a God when they saw him preaching. And your father... What I like about what you said is when he turned, he turned. He turned. And and if he wouldn't have turned, you know, a lot of his legacy might not have been able to pull up when they did. Amen. You know and what I'm like, saying? I know what you're saying, Bill. People don't understand your environment shape your character, but the bottom line, you have a choice. Now, you can choose to go right or you can choose to go left. Now, I don't blame any of my decision-making based upon what my dad did. It just opened up an arena that I wanted to kind of taste the waters, even though he told me not to. After your father made this transformation, you know, that's what HOT stands for, House of Transformation. As, uh -huh. as you made this transformation, uh -huh. did you stop? Did you, what did you do? How did that affect you? I didn't stop. I, I kind of went to, I, I got saved, but I don't think it was to the point where I dedicated and submitted totality. I still had this Nick wanted to try some things because of the people I hung around with was kind of exciting. So I started dibbling and dabbing. I had relapsed, you know, after giving my life to Christ, I was doing what I need to do for him. It, it, it wasn't exciting at that moment. Because I think I was young and I still wanted to have fun. Not knowing the only fun you can have is to Jesus <laughs> at that time. Well, well, let me just jump in here and ask you once again. Your father turning his life around. Yes, Bill. Did that really mean much to you at that time? It totally did. It meant that there was something that I wanted to be a part of because I saw two lives. It meant that seeing him preaching the way he did, he was so dedicated to this church. He was so dedicated in the world, in the word, excuse me. It meant to me that the life that was going to be ahead of me had to be better than what was behind me because of how my dad stood for God. So, yes. Amen. You yes. said that so well. Amen. Okay, so we go through the hoes and the pimps and the drug, but yeah. then somewhere in that, you got kind of sprung or you got, how did the drug scene come up? The drug scene came up when I, actually when I moved to Colorado Springs. I had cousins who were very heavily dealers into the drug scene. But like I said, Bill, don't nobody make you do anything. I wanted to try it for myself. I wanted to see if this is going to be real, the way they think, the way they're acting. I wanted to feel that way. I thought I was going to be feeling amazing. So I started tooting cocaine, lots of it. Wait, 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 hold up. I'm sorry. Come on back. Yeah, yeah, can we just rewind a little bit? Let's rewind, Bill. You said what? You was what? I was, too, I was a tutor. I tutored cocaine. Oh, okay. I was, yeah, I was tutoring cocaine at Colorado Springs. Hard drugs. Hard drugs. Okay. But the, you know, yeah, straight up doing it. Because it was so much around me every day.
And unfortunately, I can, I'm going to say it again, your environment shapes your character, but you don't have to choose to go down that road. I chose to because I wanted to see. I wanted to see the, uh, the effect of what it, that drug would do for me. And what did you see? I didn't see a doggone thing, Bill. I felt crazy. I thought I was looking cute. I thought I was the you know what. Yeah. <laughs> I, was going down. I was going down. You were looking cute in them fires and yeah, those things the like that and all that. Yeah. Okay. But my mind wasn't right. Are you where are you at like now or I guess that was a, like a tricky question. Let me cut oh, no, that no, part. I'm for real about it. Let me tell you something. Okay, I'm talk. 24 years clean of everything. Amen. I haven't been any drugs, any nothing. If it's water, I'm gonna check and make sure it's water. <laughs> but you know, yeah, 24 years, and to capitalize on it, it was a woman of God that told me that God had a purpose for me, and He was taking me to a whole new realm of life. So. Yeah, she captured my attention, and I've emerged like it's like a metamorphosis. I've come from a cocoon to the butterfly. Now I'm flying with God. Hey, Amen. In the, in your in your drug experiences, we know that there comes times when you feel low, you you do yeah. dumb things, and all that. Has there ever been a time that maybe you stopped and picked it back up again, or did yeah. you ever? So you have like. You can even share with us like what it is to relapse. The relapse factor is what you said. I was in a situation of, uh, it's a lot of funerals I was going to, a lot of funerals. And I questioned God, I'm like, why is this occurring over and over and over again in my life? When you Lord said that you were my God, why is this happening? Of course, that's when the enemy taps in and you listen, yeah. You might as well go on over there and talk to old boy. You got a line or two for you. And I paid attention and listened. And I failed. I relapsed pretty hard. Uh, I started shooting coke again. I did. I, I even had a travel with crack cocaine. I did that as well. I had fell so low, Bill. Fell so low. I had the nerve to blame my, my associates at the time who was climbing the ladder. And I had to blame them and say, how dare you look at me like I am not important to God. We all are. I was feeling bad because I had failed. And I knew my status could, should have been higher. My whole life was already ordained by God. He orders my steps. Amen. Attention. Yeah. Amen. Amen, oh, yeah. my sister. I'm glad that uh, you shared that with us. A lot of people think that Coming over drugs and alcohol is a simple thing, but like you were saying to us earlier, it's you. You're going to have to put that commitment into it. I'm going to show this little picture of you here in your brown and brown and uh, looking all fly there. We're going to flip the script a little bit. We're going to go past that. We're going to go on into, let's pick it up where the lady turned around and uh, said to you about, when you walked in, yeah, yeah, where the, where, the, where the lady of God, the lady of God busted you out. Busted me straight out, Bill. I was on my way to church, and I stopped by to pick up me a bag of marijuana before I got to church, because I had to have my joint, a two or three. Okay. So yeah, I went to church, and I was saying, come on, wrap up the word. Let, wait, 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 before we, before we get too far ahead of ourselves. I believe there was somebody that used to ask to go to church, and they busted you. Not you got you got to tell the tell people about that. Yeah, the young man that I would invite to church every Sunday, Bill. Every Sunday, he's such a young man, about nine years old, and I would ask him to go to church with me every Sunday. So this particular Sunday, prior in church, I was running out my marijuana, so I made plans to stop by on the way to church. I'm in the back of my patio. Smoking the weed, just smoking. The young man said, Were you, are, are, are you in the back? Was that you in the back smoking weed? I said, Yes. And you want to invite me to church? I said, I do. He said, Well, how does that work? My reply to the young man was, God is still working with me. 
Amen. It's still a work in progress. Amen. So we got to pay attention to our environment and who we really, um, we can either touch someone the wrong way by our walk, saying who we are and what we're doing. Because kids now want to see the testimony, okay? I, Versus hear it. They want to see it. I, I agree with you wholeheartedly. That's why uh, this story really means so much to me as well. We need to, all parents need yeah. to really watch what we do in front and what we say in front of our yeah. children. I mean, we should watch what we do, period. Anyway. Yeah, any, that's the way we should be. We don't want to be hypocrites. Like yeah. like I say, I probably was around my kids. You know, they couldn't do nothing. But their daddy do whatever. You know what I'm yeah. saying? We can't have that. You got you to gotta be real about your walk, like you said. Yeah. Like you said about your father. We got to keep yeah. it 100. 100. You know? 110. <laughs> 110. I like that. So, Miss Bond. Yeah. Okay. Going back to, so you sitting in church. Okay. The young man, yeah, the young man then cracked on you. Yes. Okay. Pick it up. The preacher, is, she ministers, woman of God preaching. She stopped the service. Just stopped it. And she said, there's someone in my church that's here today with some weed in their purse. No one knew me at this particular church, so I couldn't blame no one for telling her because she didn't even know me. I was just visiting that day. Immediately after church, Bill, I went up to the woman of God and I said, the Spirit told me to just come up and tell you I'm the one with the weed in my purse. <laughs> Busted. <laughs> Busted. She says, young woman of God has got a plan for your life. He's taking it to a whole new level. But what you're going to have to do is make up your mind today. Choose life or death. Amen. Hey. Amen. And choose life. And with that bill, my life has changed 360. I felt so wrong on the inside for me to have, have the audacity to even go in the church. And that to me, it didn't bother me when I went in there with the weed. Right. I figured, you know, God know me. He's going to be all right with the weed. I'm up in church. Hurry and get to <laughs> So I go smoke the weed. But the, the bottom line is, had I not gone, my purpose probably wouldn't have been as dynamic as it is today because I'm so sincere about it. Well, I really appreciate that because God has really worked in your life. And I've known you for a minute. You yes. know, and uh, I definitely know he has worked in both of our lives. And I'm really glad that you share that story. Right now, I'd like to uh, bring up this uh, situation with this young lady. And when you got into this church and you got into this modeling and you started training people, I have a picture here of a, uh, Someone that you were training on the runway? Yes. That's my, uh, I have several purposes. This purpose is my Bonnie Enterprise, which I do. I take young ladies, and I not only lift them up, I teach them etiquette. What to wear, how to walk, what to dress, okay, how to dress. And so that's one of my fantastic purposes. I think every young lady should be treated as a queen because that's who we are. So I take this purpose very, very, very serious as well. I will train the young lady. I'll put them on the runway. They love it. Teach them how to hold their shoulders back and their heads up. And walk with purpose. Walk like you have a crown on your head because we do. Hey, now, I've, I've been to some of your shows. They're you fantastic. Know. They're simply fantastic. And how a person's life can go from in the hotel and all of that yes. to yes. sitting and being an asset to young women and trying yes. to show them how to be a lady and mm -hmm. what it takes to be a woman. And, and you don't need all these other things out here. Be secure in yourself. That's a great mm -hmm. message. I also have this other one that I wanted you to explain to me. It uh -huh. was, uh, looked like human beings and mannequins. Y'all just sitting there. What's up with that? Hey, let me tell you about the mannequin aspect. Okay. <laughs> I train mannequin modeling as well. It's not as easy as it look. What that entails, we go to, I'm hired to bring how many ladies at this boutique request to come in their shop, either sit in their window or stand in their window and act 
just like a mannequin, a live mannequin. So we're real people, but the objectives is to bring people into the store. Wait, 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 wait. Yes. Okay, so I heard you right. <laughs> they would pay a real human to just stand there. Yes. And, and why would they pay a human instead of just put a mannequin up there? Here's the concept. You prefer to see somebody real in clothing, most of the boutiques, versus that one size mannequin statue that's in the window. Uh, the fashion is getting so great now. You have so many different sizes that are amazing. I'm so glad they're doing that. No one's always just a zero, and everybody's not 5'12", okay. or 5'11", or 6 feet. So what I capitalize on is the women that are my height, my size, or any woman. It don't have to be 5'11 anymore. You could be 5 feet, 5'2", five 5'10". Five you can weigh 100, 150. Some of the ladies I work with, they are 2'10", but they're bad. They're beautiful women. And so with that type of clientele that they're asking for, I'm going to tell you something. The bigger, the better right now. Uh-oh. Uh-oh. Well, okay. Watch out, skinny women. <laughs> okay, yeah, but I, I see it. I see it coming. Well, yeah. Miss Bonnie, I am really glad that you took this opportunity, this time with us here at Where Were You? And I'm glad that you took the opportunity to share your story with us. I really am. And because I do know some things about you, I know that you have other Where Were You's. I know that there's been death in your family. Yes. I know there's a lot of times people tell a story, a couple of stories, but yeah. there's more stories where God has delivered us and where God has brought us through. And I just wanted to know, Ms. Bonnie, if you ever feel comfortable, would you mind come back again? I would love to. You know, I'm employed as well, called Ladies and Positive Spirit, to encourage, to uplift, and to inspire. If we have a moment, I've got a short poem that I'd like to leave with you. When I need a pick-me-up, I call on Jesus, and He lifts me up. He wraps me in his grace. And oh yes, the Lord allows me sometimes to see his face. He'll open doors for you and always loves you too. Jesus moves stumbling blocks out of the way. Just listen to what our God has to say. Go, go, my children and show your love and watch the blessings fall from above. You see, I work for Jesus every day and don't care what people say. Forgive me, Lord, for all I've done, even after you've given your only begotten son. So if you need a pick me up, call on Jesus and allow him to lift you up. This is LIPS, Ladies and Positive Spirit, sponsored to you by God. God loves you and so do we. Well, another episode of Where Were You? And we would like to thank our guests for this evening. Also want to thank New Me. New Me helps sponsor Where Were You? So go on and check it out. New Me forward slash Arcway. Also, go on and hit that like. Go on and hit subscribe. Go on and hit that share. Go on and leave a comment. And if you find anyone that has a story, let me know. And hey, you bless someone today. <laughs>